startup investor perspective so where idea is to invite angel investors come and share their perspectives uh, this is not necessarily a pitching event but trying to understand their perspective why they invest in startups how they go about it so typically whenever you would want to pitch to a actual investor or in, uh, the investors for your business this experience or understanding their perspective might be really helpful to you uh, uh, so kunal the format goes like you give your brief introduction uh, like something or some of the work and then we'll get to the q and a part Uh, and meanwhile, I'll share screen. So whenever you are speaking, I'll just open up some of your websites. So thank you so much, Kunal, and just just brief about you, and then we'll get started with the Q and A. Yes, Kunal. So brief. Okay, so brief intro about me. Uh, hi guys, uh, my name is Kunal Nandwani. Uh, I am the founder of a couple of company. Uh, run a company called U Trade Solutions, which is in financial trading software space. Uh, this is a u trade i run a blockchain bitcoin crypto based company called hashcove uh, which is based out of you uh, a couple of small initiatives and i'm uh, the co-founder and an angel investor uh, of chandigarh angels network so uh, which started about 5 years ago uh, and i said uh, and try to doing my own startups in the last 10 years i had uh, uh i had worked uh with some banks uh, lehman brothers nimera uh, etc in london and uh, so currently i'm based i split between india uk and singapore mainly i'm based in india and north india and chandigarh i've done a few things here and there before and uh, i've written a book on bitcoin and blockchain uh, how it may change the world in the future uh, and currently the process of a book on uh, startups that can focus on sustainability and uh, solving real issues that we face as humanity so that book should come out in the next 2 3 months it's now due to the current issue we are all grounded so i'm using the time to write certain things so that's a very brief introduction and i'm an angel investor i invest in some startups and along with chandigarh angel networks um, the chandigarh angels network i had i've had thousands of startups in the last 5 years so i have some experience in uh evaluating stuff um and uh, before doing this i had for my own startups i had also raised capital uh, myself from angel investors as well as from uh we have been on sort of both sides of the table and uh, yeah that's a very brief introduction about me uh, any of you looking to connect with me can do that uh, now during the process afterwards kunal nandwani you can find me on linkedin and twitter the uh, yeah, open to questions or open to specific things you want to know Awesome. Uh, so, friends, if you have any questions, you can ask in the chat or the Q and A part. And towards the later part of this webinar, we'll have some of you join in. And before that, I'll ask a couple of questions to Kunal. So, Kunal, thank you so much. Uh, you've done a lot of interesting stuff, uh, and you are still doing it. Uh, so, Kunal, briefly, you, you mentioned about you raise your funds, uh, you run your business. At the same time, you invest in startups also. So, about your fundraising journey, uh, uh, what was a con was that a conscious decision? You reached out to investors. What was that? Just brief about that, and we'll get to some other questions also. So I raised um, some money for my first startup, uh, which is U Trade. Uh, didn't have to since uh, my first startup eventually became a small business and profitable, so we didn't have to raise any more, and that funded the subsequent businesses. But in the first startup, we had to invest. We build an enterprise software, so it takes two three years to build a product and uh, in in fund, and we put in all our own savings, and then. We went out and raised from some friends, family, and some uh, angel and seed funds, so angel investors and seed funds, um, and it had worked out okay because the business uh, did okay after after a while, and uh, now it's a small business growing on its own. So yes, yeah, so it was a conscious decision. We had to raise funds. Um, my suggestion or thought process is that if you can live without raising, that's the best thing. Raising is not necessary for every business it depends on what business you are in you must know and understand that and uh, if you still need some funds to be raised go do it but if you some businesses can be better run track and you can do that that is a highly high recommendation uh, fundraising has become more fashionable somehow people like to raise funds and flaunt about it or raise too much funds and uh, sort of somehow we have in the start telling that fundraising means you are successful <laughs> fundraising doesn't mean you're successful at all let me get that out of the way fundraising just means that somebody believes in your business somebody believes that you can do more but you know every 
angel believer, the angel investor or a VC firm or any other fund, they invest in 10 companies, they know that seven will go down. So it just means that you're probably in the, you know, some ratio, you have some probability of doing better from here on. But it doesn't mean that you succeed it. And you can go back and look in history. There are so many companies who raised lots of funds but have not done well after that and have shut down. You know, so fundraising is not a sign of success. Do it only if you absolutely need it because it's a very painful process and it's a process. It's a long time, a lot of your energy, and you have to deal with a lot of rejections from hundreds to thousands of people. And you know, it's not easy, right? Um, and even if you raise, then you have to live with that investor for pretty much for life. So it's almost like marrying someone. So it's not uh, as romantic as it sounds. Okay, so that was the question. So Harshit, this your question got part answered. Uh, so uh, Harshit question was Kunal, uh, how do we know whether we should bootstrap or raise a fund? Or what was when is the right time to go about raising? Funds? So, sure. So let me tell you concept of business first. Okay. Uh, how does a business work? Let's say you are in the business of uh, doing e commerce in India. Okay, I'm just taking examples which you may be able to relate with. What is e-commerce business in India? It is not about who has a better platform. It is not about who has uh, the better logistics. It is about who can give more discounts and retain more customers because in the current market or the market was who can attract, build the market better. So Flipkart, Snapdeal all ended up trying to build in the market. And in building the market, you are in the business of fundraising, right? So business you are, I don't know if you, any of you play poker in poker if you don't know who the fool on the table is and it's you so you need to really know what's going on in your market the market you are trying to address are you disrupting someone are you competing with someone who has more money than you are you competing with someone who's raising you are you building something which is better cheaper faster than everyone else and can just can be the disruptor so you know it's important to understand those things first once you know which business you are in now you need to look look around on your flows are you able to sustain your business? Can you make revenues while you build your product or service or your platform or consumer base or whatever you're trying to build? If you can do that without losing too much money and you can manage your burn, then your funds. As long as your competition is also not raising more than you to kill you, right? So you, Swiggy or Zomato, Zomato might be building a great platform, but if Swiggy is raising more, Zomato is scared because uh, Swiggy will be able to give more or discounts so has to raise now swiggy has to raise so that's a different business model so leave food food tech or whatever however they call these different jargons of every business leave paytm for a while leave flipkart snapdeal for a while you might be a real business you might be building a real product you don't need to raise too much very likely right but if you need to first know which business you are in and then know what you know who what is everyone else in that market doing what is a consumer doing what is your competition doing it's like if you can manage your cash flow within it without raising, do not raise. If you think you cannot manage it, you need to raise a little bit, raise it from your friend's family and fools, which is the first round they say. <laughs> if you need to raise a bit more, few lakhs, few tens of lakhs, dozens of lakhs or few crores, go to angel investors. If you need to raise more, you go to some VC fund or somebody else. So, but it's important to know which business you are in one, what is your competition doing and how can you manage your cash flows? You might be able to create value without raising any money you might be able to do something which nobody is thinking of it might be a disruptive model it might be something very interesting it depends you know uh, that's a long short answer but i've tried to give some examples which might be which might be relevant perfect uh, uh, and uh, kunal how did you get into it so you mentioned about you co-founded uh, chandigarh engines net and got into it so what was that trigger for you to start investing in startups so yeah so i had um, i had raised some money for my business i had mainly that it's five or five years and the business became profitable and now i started to talk to startups in terms of helping some or investing in some or mentoring some and i realized that in in the area like chandigarh they were not uh, they were people individually but there's no platform where everyone could come together where startups could go to and find a mentor or find an investor or um, entrepreneurs could go or the investors could go to and find good startups to invest in so i had this idea and few other people in the region had similar idea so we started co-founded the chandigarh angels network in order to build the platform where everyone could connect just like you have founded co-founded each eye um, so that's how we had come up with it in 2015 or 14 or 16 i forget it's been number of years 15 or 16 
And since then, we have currently more than 50 angel investors in the group. All are available for free mentoring to anyone. You'll be surprised how much angel investors slash business people are willing to give you time if you are willing to ask. I'm willing to ask. So all you got to do is ask. Go with a qualified introduction. Go on LinkedIn, write a message. Go, qualified introduction is better. If some you know someone who knows the person, they're likely to respond and they do give time. Everyone, when it comes to cutting a check, they are very selective. But in terms of giving time for advice, they're all willing to do it. So, uh, you know, from Chandigarh Angels Network, we do mentorship, we run free mentorship clinics, we do these kind of webinars, we do tons of things. And we invest in startups. So we've done 20 plus investments. I think, I don't know the exact amount, but maybe 20 crore plus invested over the last four, five years. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's how we started and we got in and did a great traction since. Awesome. So there are a lot of questions for you. So the questions would either be about your perspective on those things that start to get asked by the investors uh, and then your experience. Sure. So the, the sure. question, how to evaluate pre-revenue startups? So it's very hard. Uh, uh, to pre-revenue startups, broadly, I would suggest there are maybe two ways to do it. One is look at how much cash you need, how much money you need to run it for one to two years or one to three years. Okay. Let's say for one to three years, you need say 50 lakhs. In every round of funding, you will dilute 10 to 25% of your equity. Meaning if your company is worth 100, then any number between 10 to 25, or let's simplify and say 20 or 15, 15 to 20. If you want 50 lakhs, give or take, if you want 50 lakhs and you want to give 20% of equity to your investor, uh, this means that your valuation is 2.5 crores. Thumb rule. There's no science. Don't put off the revenue projections discounted cash out of the window because they are they are never achieved i've no i've not seen a business plan in excel which has worked ever in life all of them change dramatically and always for the worst rarely for the better uh, uh, that's one way you're trying to to value it second way is that do not do the valuation and do a convertible note which means that do not decide the valuation today and you say that in the next round or the next to next round in the next two three four years if you do another round of funding, whatever your value is decided. Let's say two years later, somebody puts in two crores for 10 crore valuation. Uh, now today, somebody has given you 50 lakhs. Means that 10 crore valuation in two years, you discounted back 20%. So means that a year before it was eight, a year before it was six, give or take, I'm getting the numbers might be wrong. But so say you are valued at six crores then. And at that point, you give 50 lakhs uh, worth of equity out, out, out of six crores means that you nine percent or something rough maths so you can do a convertible in which you don't value today you wait till the next round valuation which is done by a more professional investor which is post revenue and better place to do it for you and then there are in it you cannot have the valuation lower than one crore or you cannot have valuation more than let's say 20 crores or so so those things you can apply um so that's a convertible note you can consider yeah there are more questions so there is a question sometimes a lot of startups are if there are no comparables available for the startups, how investors would evaluate them? Sorry, if there are comparables. Like so, similar looking startups or are, yes. is there a thing called similar not having a comparable? So I'm, I'm not in favor model. If you tell me that you're in car hailing business and Uber is valued at 100 billion and you or 50 billion or whatever SoftBank is valuing it today uh, and you are in the same business and you should be 1 billion today or something like that, it doesn't work. It's a... Uh, I don't think many people come up with the examples of very large established firms or who have raised tons of money and valuing yourself compared to them. You can't do that. That's not a fair comparison. Do not also show, uh, and I see that this a lot, do not also show that uh, your American counterpart got funded uh, at 3 million at a 10 million valuation. You are only asking for 1 million at 5 million. That doesn't work either. I'll tell you why. US is a different market. It's 10 times bigger, 100 times more efficient. A lot of opportunities. India has a lot of challenges, ease of doing business in India, just see the ranking, etc. So it's hard. So the, the comparables are generally early stage, very hard to compare with. Now, Zomato Swiggy doing their valuation compared to each other may still work. Zomato Uber Eats in US may work because they're big enough, right? But early stage pre-revenue or very early stage, it's not, the, it's not a good way to look at comparables. Okay. Uh, Bhushan has asked, I have my platform built, I have traction, but I need money for marketing and scaling. And further development, should I raise now? 
look, if you think you can raise, sure, do try. But uh, again, how much money do you think you need? Depends on that. Number one. Number two, if you think your platform is deep, um, have someone validate that. I'll tell you as an entrepreneur, we all think we are ready. Our product is ready. But we are far away from it in reality and we are not willing to admit it. Um, so frankly, what you think is ready doesn't mean it's ready for the market. It sell that one word of caution, I would say. But secondly, if you think you cannot run you without raising, do go out and raise. Uh, and if you think you're ready, do go out and raise. But pre-revenue, it'll be very hard. And right now in the COVID in coronavirus situation, good luck. It's going to be very tough. So you may want to conserve your energy for a few months and figure out some other value you can put in your platform before you go out and raise. But if you have no other choice, there's not a day's bill you can pay without raising, you need and raise. And uh, thumb rule, if you need to raise money, so look in your bank account, all startups. If you think you need to raise money in six months, you need to start now. Because fundraising takes six months to one year at least. Lucky. You may still not. A lot of people try and do not end up raising. So just FYI, you cannot start raising the day you run out of money. You need to start six months to a year before. Okay. So do keep this in mind. Uh, so it may be the right time for you to start talking to people, value more value in your platform and bringing some customers and traction somehow. But remember, it'll take time. And in today's market environment, it may take a long time. Okay, this is an interesting question by Marvin Bhatt. Uh, what are the minimum money required to become an angel investor? What is the minimum? Money required to become an angel investor. I think typically angel investors start investing at 5 lakh rupees or 2.5 lakh rupees per startup per instrument amount. So minimum is 5 lakhs, but this is the money. So do not become an angel investor with the 5 lakhs of your life savings. Okay. If you're earning a year 5 lakhs and putting 5 lakhs in a startup angel, you're becoming an angel. It's stupid. Don't do that. This is the money that we to lose. Let that set in. Angel investors give the money they give to startups, imagining the worst case, they're not going to see it back. Yeah. Okay. Most angel investors end up losing a lot of money. So before we do 10, 20 investments, I don't expect anyone to make money. Most of them will lose. Okay. So do it when you have, let's say you have one crore of cash in your bank account. Let's say I'm making a number up and you're willing, you're okay to lose 10 lakhs if you do it. Sure, you can start considering to become an angel investor, invest in two startups a year, as long as you have something else, some other business or something else going for you, do try and go and become an angel investor. But don't do it if you have... Okay, that's not how it works. First few investments, you're likely to lose. Okay, and this is a, a question that is being asked to a lot of startups and sometimes it is very confusing to answer. How do we calculate the size of the market, total serviceable market and total achievable market? Okay, so uh, it's a bit of uh, science and bit of guesswork. Okay, it's at the end, you should, it just means that you've done detailed. So there are some markets which are reasonably well established. Let's look at the market. Uh, E-commerce, you have millions of numbers out there on millions of websites. They'll say it's a $20 billion market in India growing at NASCOM will give you a number. like. 20 today will be 50 billion by 2025. So you know the number. E-commerce, this is what how much people will order. How much of 25 billion or 20 billion can you address? Now, if you are selling only clothes, let's say you're selling kids' clothes, so your segment is not 20 billion. 20 billion market, you're civil with clothes for kids. If let's say that's your business model, you are doing the baby oil or something like that, then your model may be 1 billion or 2 billion. There may be a number ask or someone else. Food tech market. It's defined. You know the really numbers they like how much they do per order they sell they do millions of orders a day there are three companies in here doing it you can add up you'll get the number it's harder for unestablished markets so let's say you want to look at esports market today which is still and growing it's a small number it will still be available somewhere let's say you want to build a uh, something for coronavirus let's say you are finding a cure for coronavirus okay how big is the market potential is 7 billion how much is addressable by you you can sell only debit, you can't export, every country has its FD, US FDA policy will come in, etc. You can't get clearances. Your addressable market is 1.3 billion Indian population. What is a realistically target market you will have? Not everyone will get sick. So maybe say 60% may get sick in the next year or two years or whatever time, whatever WHO is saying. 
so you'll come up to a number of 600 million is your target market out of which maybe you can get local market of punjab or gujarat because you're based there and you can locally right even in the case of lockdown so this is how you need to run the numbers i'm just making some random numbers up by the way they might be very off but it just means that you need to study and know your market well like i said earlier you should know your business well you need to know your market well as well yeah who's there who are alternate who's competing who's competing in punjab who's competing in gujarat who you are competing against in us and if you haven't thought that through and you don't have an idea about it you're going to lose you are the fool on the poker table right so do understand this and this is how you may get to your target market numbers okay i'm just some numbers i hope they add up to you yeah uh, there are a couple of questions around uh, pretty similar one by pranav malhotra and bushan also uh, will the coronavirus situation affect the fundraising landscape or what is so like you are like an insider so what what is your in yes. view on that sure sure uh, definitely does impact the reason is the following all the angel investments like i said people are doing with their spare money you know people who have spare money of 1 crore or 100 crore they have that spare money because they are having some cash flow coming from some businesses which are going on the side today most of the some businesses on the side the real core focus business of all angel investors are in trouble and this may be selling hotels maybe uh, you know providing travel services might be providing a software to british airways you're screwed right now you have no revenue coming you you if you will cut into your spare check and you will save it for the rainy days yourself so currently all angel investors will go super slow all seed investors and vc firms will go super slow slow because they are not going to be um, angel investors because they may or may not see too much revenue coming in or profits coming in business but make sure their business survives they pay salaries to their employees which will be a higher priority for everyone if you are a fund or a vc you will not be able to raise the next 1 billion or 100 million or 2 billion again easily in the next 1 to 3 years or investors also now in the top spot so you're not going to raise for 2 3 years so you'll become very selective so uh, everyone will slow down all investments currently it's all about putting your head down and if anything the angel vc investors will look into investing and making their who have a decent business model but are unable to survive because of the tough market so you know you would rather save your current family rather than look into your future potential families right very well answered uh, ashwin samani from surat has asked we are enterprising saas product focused on indian smes average uh, inr 30 by 100 rupees per month per customer and having operational break even is it advised to grow organically or get funds to grow faster particularly after corona market situation yeah. uh organic number one because by the time and for, corona virus is here for a few weeks few months few quarters realistically up to a year uh, in that year you're not going to be easily able to raise money so raising money is going to be was hard on a scale of 110 level 10 now it's going to be 100 so it's harder than you imagine it's not easy to raise funds okay let me get that again straight so i reckon you should try you have a reasonable business you have something going for you try your revenues yeah keep your head down and manage your cost as well uh, this is not a good good time to raise and in business saas models if it's working and scaling really you may not need to raise too much or any money at all so frankly try to not raise in my view okay right now uh, try to move into your platform try and add more value for your clients and bring more clients if you can uh, awesome uh, shivan says as uh, how should a startup at pre revenue stage value itself and its assets also does the intellectual value of founders count not beyond a point so like, i talked about valuation few minutes ago um, go back to 10 minutes before answer it's the same thing uh, ideas so how many so uh, let ask a question i want you to answer this in your mind how many of you think ideas of your startup should be unique don't answer here just think okay the answer is it should not be unique unique ideas work idea has zero value okay i can give you 10 ideas right now which will make a billion dollars in the next 5 years to some startup if you are looking for an idea i'll give you an idea <laughs> i'm writing a book with business plan on with 10 such ideas okay do connect with me offline on linkedin and i'll publish this idea in as well 10 business plans which will definitely make billion dollars by 2025 it's not the idea idea doesn't count ip of people and your knowledge doesn't count what counts is how you can execute this 
better than everyone else. That is what the real market is. Do you think Google was a first search engine? No. Alta Vista existed before that. Do you think Facebook was for the first social network? No. Was Apple the first uh, iPod the first digital music device? No. Many others existed before. Being first never helps. Actually, it's better to be a little late. You know, why do you think Amazon came in after five, ten years of Flipkart and Snapdeal? Because the market was built by them. Amazon came and took the market. Amazon thanked them that, you know, the investors put billions of dollars in training people how to use Amazon, right? When Amazon came in, everyone moved to Amazon, right? This was a statement made by some VC I read, I heard. So uh, coming back, IP, I don't value it much at early stage or pre startups you know if the product will work clients will pay unless you are a nasa scientist or you have you built something like something of rocket science or you've got some electric car charging thing which even elon can't build then ip may value. okay maybe value the way more likely not all of us are in the similar boat we are not geniuses so none of that values and none of that that is as valuable as you may think and uh, regarding how much you should value go back 10 minutes in the webinar later you'll find the answer yeah, uh, Kunal, uh, so you run your own business, uh, so uh, and you invest in startups. So, so, so are there any cases where uh, the startups where you invest in, they operate in a certain way, and you would want them to operate in a certain way? So, what happens in those cases? So, personally, look, um, it this uh, varies from angel investors to angel investors. Some people invest and they want majority of the company, or they want a big chunk, and they want to control what startups do. Very few angel investors are like that. Really, you want such investors because it doesn't help. You know, at the end, the way I operate is that I would give the money. If some startup needs some advice or some help, they can come to me. If they want me to connect them with one, I'll try. But I'm trying to. I'm busy enough running my own life and my own businesses that I don't have any time to actually give gyan. I just hope that they have more to gain, more to lose if their startup works. So hence, they are the ones who should be driving. They are the uh, are the captains of their own ship. So I don't give any advice um, the, unless they ask. Of course, if you need help, I'm here, but I'm not going to come in day to day and say, why are you not doing this? Why are you not doing that? It's none of my business. Okay. So a couple of questions around uh, very technicalities. A, is it compulsory to include uh, investors in board after investment? Or do investors it, want to be get on the board seat? So not compulsory to take anyone on the board. Depends if they're given a lot of money. Uh, Angel investors are optional to be on the board. Some want to, some don't. It doesn't matter. Frankly, I don't know if you know, Indian corporate laws are very strict. In case you do any mistake, you do any misfilings, all the board of directors are held liable. Uh, thank you, Jay Malyas and many others in the previous years. So frankly, most angel investors do not want to be on the board because they know that there is a liability they are taking. It's not a, it's not a, a, a privilege anymore. It's a liability. So really, uh, I don't think most angel investors would want to be on the board, but VCs do take board positions so they can control the strategy a bit because they put in a lot of money as well, uh, which is not their own money. There is from someone else, but anyways, they do take board positions, but angel investors do not typically on the board. So if you, you can choose to have them, if you like them and you feel you want the value from them, sure, take them on if they want to. But otherwise, I, I would imagine that angel investors would stay away from it. Okay. And is it advisable uh, for a startup founder to take their consultants or other people to negotiate with their potential investors? Have you seen that or would you recommend um, that? Um, it happens a little. I think uh, no, no, I've not this. I've not seen much. There are very few consultants in the picture, but I would not advise that. I think um, you should be able to negotiate. It's your business. You should be able to negotiate directly with the angel investors and uh, remember you should negotiate a bit no problem but remember 100 percent of zero is a zero so you know you can't keep all the equity and imagine you'll build some value if you don't have money so you do need to compromise a bit but yeah you should i think you should try and negotiate directly even if you're a bad negotiator tell your angel investor that do a fair deal and eventually angel investors know that if they take too much of the company you will have less to gain less to lose eventually and you'll not be interested in running it so I don't think angel investors are so frankly they should do a fair deal try and find the fair deal uh, i don't think you need consultants if you need a consultant to value a company or to have uh, um, you know to negotiate your valuation with the 
you'll struggle in your business because you'll need to do tons of negotiations yourself in life. If you're a co-founder, you need to be able to manage this with, between the co-founders, you know, one or two may be better than others to do this, but you, you should have the skill in your team. You need to do sales, you need to do tons of things and all the negotiations would apply there as well. Uh, Chandra Kant has asked a very relevant question. What kind of new wave of startups do you see post COVID-19? Uh, more focused on healthcare, telemedicine. Telemedicine is the healthcare ATM kind of a model, remote doctors, etc. More uh, deep research in healthcare around viruses, new models of developing new medicines like RNA DNA based rather than salt based. A uh, lot of biotech stuff. A lot of uh, uh, lot of um, companies that can make masks, ventilators quickly. The hospital beds convert them into something extra. So all these things. Bill Gates talked about this last night. I think I was watching it on CNN or CNBC. On TED, um, so uh, so TED Talk was 2015. Now recently, last. Uh, last so he did another. TED Live recently. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So uh, tons of things around this. I think healthcare will, in my view, take over the budgets that defense industry, defense industry get. Severe people said, you know, new nuclear powers or new nuclear bombs or new um, helicopters won't help if you have nobody to save. So I think um, the, every country's healthcare budgets uh, would increase dramatically, and defense hope that happens next year if not starting this year. So uh, I think such opportunities will come. But telemedicine is a hot area in my view. You know, okay. everywhere there should be a telemedicine counter, just like an ATM machine now replacing a bank. You can okay. have telemedicine uh, connecting you to a remote doctor dispensing the machines. So you believe healthcare is going to skyrocket? Very likely, very likely. Yeah. Uh, has asked, so A, uh, typically what kind of due diligence you do before investing in a startup? And the other part is who bears the due diligence cost, investor or founder? So it's it could be a mix of uh, sometimes investors bear, sometimes the uh, the uh, the co-founders of the startups can bear the cost. Startup or the co-founder, uh, startup or the investors both can bear or share the cost. Uh, but uh, generally, uh, investors will um, uh, investors will always appoint is auditor. They will never accept an auditor that is selected by the startup. Okay, startups may have to pay for the auditor that's selected by the investors. Okay, um, that's one. But I think uh, in terms of due diligence, they'll just check what you told them. So say if you had pitched them that you have a million dollar business or you have hundred clients or you have this client or that client or this product or that product, they'll just check all that. They'll check if you said you have 10 employees or 100 employees or whatever, they'll check that whether you're filing GST, your accounting is in order, that you're filing taxes, GST, all the compliances. You have the revenue and payroll numbers that you say you have. They'll check your uh, variety of things which are linked with compliance. Uh, so essentially, whatever you pitch to them is what they want to check. If you sign contracts, you've said that you have a contract with a big client, let's say Maruti is your client and you have a big contract with them, they may ask for a copy of the contract just to see what the contract says, etc. So those kind of things, whatever you've said is what they're going to check. Any projections you've made for the future, they can't check you and you can't check it yourself. So I don't think they check that. Yeah, awesome. Uh, Srinath uh, has asked, uh, do angel investors invest on pre incubators like especially startups started by students in a university or institution who are not yet registered as a company? Uh, sometimes I do. So the first round of investment investing typically for such students comes from their friends or family. So typically it's their friends or family uh, who, are, who are investing at pre idea or slash idea stage. Um, the, you know, and the investment amount may vary in from few lakhs to 10, 20 lakhs or so. So that's the how the investment works. Professional angel investors or angel investment networks do not invest pre-product, pre-company, pre-revenue. So they will need a company to be there. They'll need some product and some traction to be there before they come in. So frankly, professional angel investors would not. Ideally, if you are a student, look on look in for grants by the government, by your college or university, by alumni funds, etc., etc. There may be tons of other schemes. Banks have schemes to give uh, unsecured loans to. Uh, startups grants so government has a lot of policies and stuff so try to get those if you can 
uh, but otherwise professional angel investors do not invest pre uh, company okay awesome uh, uh, so kunal uh, can you share some examples of some of the startups you invested and why you chose to invest in that startup there are multiple reasons but what was that key trigger for you to invest in a particular startup uh, so i invested in a company which does healthcare atms so i was just talking about it right? yeah uh, space and uh, i actually found the idea very interesting i do think that uh, atms can replace uh, like the atms have replaced a lot of banking services so same way healthcare atms can replace the hospital services and that's a need of the hour, but you not bring out such technologies so i looked at the market i looked at the potential i looked at the potential it has of uh, doing the social impact so i invested in that um so these are the kind of companies i would look at or i would look at some Area. So one of the re- one of the things which makes startups very successful is the massive growth in the market. So you, you all we all want to be in massively growing market. So today the growing market is not e-commerce. Today the growing market is not food tech. I mean they're growing okay, but e-commerce is not a growing market. It's definitely shrinking. Uh, so you don't want to be in these markets where there are already big players there and you can't make much difference. You want to be in a market where which are likely to explode from here, which are like hundred today and can be ten thousand times from here. these are the markets like in the next year if you look at uh, esports people staying home watching games playing games betting on games doing whatever these kind of things are the next big thing so find the trend which you think in the next 5 to 10 years may make it big okay if you are in that market and if it was you do good work you are likely to become very valuable awesome so so uh, kunal one thing is healthcare e lending and those kind of startups would see a greater opportunity but what about like so there are a set of startups and who would have been about to launch in this time and suddenly this situation has arisen so what should they do or what should the startups who are not focused on those uh, sectors and still what should they should they pivot or what do would you recommend them again how to say depends um i think it varies from company to company there are some business models which would still work which may be offline which may not be a massively growing market but they could do reasonably well for the co-founders uh, and the startup so they may keep their head down and do the same but, but really want to be motivated by why are you doing it if you are doing it just for money you are unlikely to survive too far because it's too hard to do a startup you know you, we all know 90% or 95% shut down in the first 3 years so how will you sir survive startup journeys um in even more challenging times like right now if you're not truly motivated by it so your motivation has to be very important and very paramount to what you're doing you should be really driven by the cause of your startup's existence um if you're motivated by it whether good or bad keep doing it if you're not motivated by it really and you had just looked upon somebody else's idea and just done it because you could maybe this is a good time to pivot you know it's hard to know for co-founders when to shut down and i don't the blog on the five years ago uh, it's hard to know when to shut down on one part we say that you should persevere for long etc but on the second part you should not drag it too long when it's not working you know so there's a thin line somewhere between that so uh, uh, you may choose to pivot if your business model is not likely to survive the next few months because uh, you know without cash flows you may not but if you think you are really driven by it you're really passionate about it and you believe it can work even after and during you can survive somehow go with it okay Awesome. Harshit has asked, "Can I?" But this is good after introspection. Take a step back, think again why you are doing it. Yeah. Harshit has asked, "We are a Punjab University Chandigarh incubator startup at a MVP stage. How can we reach out to you, get an advice, and get some help?" And the same thing, how can startup? What would be the right way to reach out to investors? What is your advice? And personally, how do people reach out to you? So uh, let me answer this. Uh, actually, it will take five minutes. I have an answer, but it's a longer one. Uh, so short. Sure. long long short cut at the rest ways to reach out to people again i think uh, if you are in let's say in punjab university or you are anywhere else you are in chennai university look out for local angel investors there are local angel investor networks you can find people on linkedin people are very approachable connect with them send them a request and be very clear uh, don't spam them and understand that they may be getting hundreds of such messages every day okay so you need to you need to somehow distinguish self by writing a crisp message directly if you want to try approaching them or you go through you should be able to find someone who knows them you know you are in punjab university somebody in punjab university might know an angel investor somewhere may be able to connect with at the same time you try connecting with all of them 
So, you know, do both approach, go with a qualified introduction. If somebody recommends you or says that, okay, meet this guy or you should be able to find some uncle, aunt, friend, cousin, someone who knows someone who knows that guy. For all the participants here, if you want to connect with me, uh, connect with me on LinkedIn later, drop me a message or connect on Twitter. These are the two social media I'm on and uh, happy to connect and speak. Uh, for anybody in Chandigarh, reach out through Chandigarh in network. Uh, Awesome. So we'll take up last uh, three, four questions. Uh, uh, so what kind of traction you look for pre-revenue B2C startup trying to raise funds, uh, raising around 1.5 to 2 crore? So this is a very specific question. What kind of traction you look for pre-revenue B2C? Okay, pre-revenue B2C, you are looking for 1.5 to 2. I think uh, I would look at what is it that you're doing B2C. What is your C? What is how big is C? How competitive is C? How good your product or service is for them? And um, uh, you know who else is in that market? What is the timing? Is it a growing market or a shrinking market? Uh, uh, how you are by what you are doing? Because at the end, remember, uh, there are two things which make startup work. Number one is the timing, which you don't control. Unfortunately, you don't know at point in time which time cycle wave you are in. Second is the uh, founders so it's the people you know good people can make even bad business plans work because they pivot and adapt but um, uh, you know bad entrepreneurs will even make the good business plans suck so eventually it's your passion so we invest in people it's not the idea it's a people if they if the people are great if you guys are good and your markets are likely to grow these are the positive checkpoints and there are a few other things around it but uh, mainly timing people and the competitive landscape you are and the market is awesome. So you mentioned about uh, Chandigarh Angels Network has around forty uh, uh, angels. Uh, so yes. how, how can somebody be part of it, or, or how do you? What is the criteria to become the angel at uh, Chandigarh Angels Network? So uh, uh, frankly, we get a lot of requests for people to become angel. There are a lot of people who have the money who are nothing nothing wrong with having money, but they need to be professional at the same time. So we don't want money from some I don't know what's right. But to put it on um, Lalaji with money coming there and uh, not acting, behaving professionally with the people. So we just want that they should, they should become recommended to two or three other angel investors of the group and uh, um, they be professional somehow. That's it. Uh, so on Chandigarh Angel Network, Chandigarh Angels Network.com website, there's a way where you can apply to be, uh, to pitch as a startup or to become an angel member. So you can do both and uh, you will need recommend it's a sort of a closed group sort of but so we want them to come through some recommendation just like any members club i guess okay so you when you started uh, the one of the idea was to build a, a community in the region but now it has evolved so so uh, can you get angels network expand all over india you actively seek opportunities outside or what is the way forward now so we have done reasonably uh, 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 reasonably well, we run a lot of uh, monthly, quarterly, annual events to educate people about startups. Why should do, why should they do it? How should they do it, etc. Uh, so, with uh, the startup entrepreneurship wave, uh, uh, we grow a bit more, I guess. Um, we have invested in the companies we invest in are all over India. So, uh, the companies we invest in are not from Tri City, frankly. Out of the twenty investments, maybe there is only one which was from Tri City. I don't remember, but but maybe one or two, but not the infrastructure of India only. So frankly, we are pan India. We get some choices once in a while from outside India as well to invest in companies, but we can't really, we don't really understand the market. So we don't really get in there. Uh, for members also, we are not actively seeking for members. Rest of India, there are other local angel investor networks and it's not a competition. Frankly, we cooperate with most of them and uh, we have a MOU and we share deals and we syndicate deals with all of them. So frankly, we would not be necessarily looking for an angel investor in angel network though we do have a remote membership model for some uh, nris of the punjab region or the north india region who want to come back to chandigarh once twice a year and remotely they're happy to attend some pitch session once in a while so is how we are growing and going so far awesome so we'll take up this as the last participant question there are two questions now uh, okay do investors agree or prefer for convertible notes and can you just brief more about convertible because when you were speaking the voice was breaking yes okay sorry so 
I've seen many investors do not prefer convertible. Some are okay with it. Um, so you need to see whoever has agreed to invest in your company, whether the convert they happy with it. So most angel, in, actually I can say majority angel investors, which might be 50, 60, 70%, I don't know, making up a number, uh, are less comfortable with uh, convertible because they want the valuation to be done today so they know how much of equity they will But that's how the Indian angel investors are. Uh, I'm personally okay with it. Um, the convertible note essentially is sort of a loan which converts into equity a few years later when based on your next valuation round as a discount to that round. So today, let's say uh, your valuation, you are unable to determine your valuation, you do a convertible note and you say in two years, if you raise 10, uh, X amount, the valuation today will be determined by the value with applying a discount to it. So a lower valuation than what it is then. So you may say agree on a 20% per year discount rate. For example, two years later, if you raise money at 10 crores means 20 year, 20% 20 discount every year means today it becomes to spend some crores. So that is your valuation today. And at that money, you will get the equity raised to you. Equity will be issued to you. So this is a model of convertible. Uh, most, many Indian angel investors I've seen unfortunately do not want to know today how much equity they are getting. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. We will take up this last more question because uh, Lok Shitij has insisted that uh, should a co-founder withdraw salary from seed funding? If yes, how much or how you decide the salary? So what is your take on that? Founders taking salary? So of course, founder should draw salary. No angel investor wants that founder should go hungry or should not be able to pay themselves at all. That's not a that's not the right thing. I think our co-founders should draw salary, but it should not be. They should not say that I was at KPMG and I was getting a one lakh salary and I want to get the one lakh salary. That's not going to happen. So, you know, if you're getting a one lakh salary, you should come on a street, but you should say that cost is 20,000, 30,000, 50,000, whatever. And that's the salary I'm going to draw to stay comfortable. If you have family, you may need a bit more, right? But if you're alone, you don't need more than 30, 50,000, especially if you are uh, living alone or with parents, etc. So uh, co-founders should draw salary. There's no problem. Uh, the amount maybe should be disclosed to the investors. There's no problem. But don't make it in cent salary. It should not be that you've raised one crore and now your salary is five lakhs a month. So 60 lakhs of the year is to your salary. That's strong. Uh, awesome. So we need this year. Uh, there's one last question. Do you want me to take it? I'll, there's a one last question. Do you want me to take it? I'll, I think it's okay to quickly. Yes. So the yes. last question, uh, somebody has asked Bhushan that why when an investor is asking for of the company, how do we take it, positive or negative? The idea is it's completely negative. You should not do it. Fifty. I've seen people give 50% or 40% or X percent of the company, but then, you know, you're going to have very likely if you, if you raise one round, uh, you may need a second round as well. If when you need the second round, you will again uh, dilute 25% more and you and your co-founders and employees will be left with almost nothing. Now you'll feel that you're working for the investor and the uh, second round investor and the initial investor. So you'll not be as motivated. So frankly, 51% of any, any dilution round is wrong. You should never dilute more than 10 to 20% of your company unless it is Reliance and it's Ambani or something else who has a lot more, okay? Who is your target client, etc. So barring that exception, uh, it's a negative in my view. Awesome. Uh, Vinit, uh, if you're able to speak, probably if you can just also come online. Uh, sure, Jatim. Yes, uh, first of all, Vinit uh, is a VP at Chandigarh Angels Network and thanks to him, we are able to set this up uh, with Kunal. So Kunal, thank you so much for your time. And Vinit, sure. if you can just briefly, there were a lot of questions on how more people can get engaged with Chandigarh Angels Network. Sure, sure. <laughs> thank you very much, Kunal. Um, you've spoken great as always and I, I'm sure many people got answers to their questions and thank you, Jatin, for organizing this. So anybody who wants to get in touch with Chandigarh Angels Network can go to our website, just Google Chandigarh Angels Network. Um, and if you are looking to raise money, just apply to pitch. Our team will screen your application, suggest what to do further and uh, help you with the rest of the process. Um, and, and yeah, you know, we can do one on one calls with the participants who are looking to raise money basis, whatever information we get from them. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much. Yes, yes, Vinay. We, we are happy to explain our thesis further uh, with the participants. 
uh, maybe 101. So you, you can apply through a website or through Jatin, you can get in touch with me um, and happy to take any further discussions. Yeah, I'll share Chandigarh Angels Network's uh, website information also. And also if on LinkedIn, you can also get connected. I've tagged uh, Kunal also and Vinith also. Uh, that would be a good platform to get in touch with. Uh, and thank you so much, everyone. I'll be uploading this video tonight uh, on YouTube. So if you want to rewatch this, you can go to the each YouTube channel also. And it will be available on Chandigarh Angels Network channel also. And this was our first collab with Chandigarh Angels Network. So thank you so much. And we look forward to for more such collabs. Thank you so much, Kunal. Thank you so much, Vinit. Kunal, any closing you remarks from it. your side? The summarizing kind of questions or any hopeful thoughts that you would have for everyone? You are on mute, so probably you can speak up. Oh. Yes, yes, I'm on unmute now. So uh, I think a couple of things I may, I, I would like to conclude with if I can. Uh, firstly, um, uh, do the startup for the right reason. Don't do it because you think you can make money. Don't do it because you see someone else uh, doing a, making good money with it or raising good money with it. That's how most of us end up doing it, right? So my, my suggestion is that do it for the right reason. Do it because you are really motivated. Doing a startup is hard. It's really hard. 95% you're not going to succeed. Odds are no different if even if you are super genius, okay? So do it for the right reason, because if your motivation is right, that will help you persevere for the long term and hopefully build a good business. So motivation is very critical. The look inwards, the motivation, passion should come from inside. You should really be looking to solve a problem. That's number one while doing a startup. Secondly, avoid raising money if you can. As an angel investor, I'm telling you, do not raise money if you can live without it. Okay, look at your business model. I've talked about it earlier. Talk, not money if you can. And thirdly, if you don't have an idea uh, and you want to get an idea for uh, what to do and which is a more motivating model for you, uh, I'll try and post a link here where I've given some really good ideas which are more towards what we face as humanity. This kind of a crisis presents an opportunity. Take a step back, look inwards, think inside. What are we doing? What are we meant to be doing? What is our journey? What is our motivation? What, what, what humans are meant to do? And everyone's journey is different. So I'll share a couple of blogs, links here, quickly click on them before this uh, window disappears, I guess. And uh, feel free to go through them and find some motivating ideas. So I'm just going to share a couple of ideas. Uh, I think uh, that's enough, Gyan. <laughs> uh, so I'll go. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'll just post a couple of links here, if that's okay, Jatin. Uh, yeah, yes. And, and I'll I'll also put it on the post uh, webinar update also. That'd be great. That'd be great. So I'm just finding... Uh, articles I posted on LinkedIn earlier. Okay, and any of you, if you need any time, frankly, these days I'm grounded, so I have more time. Um, <laughs> so feel free to connect, and I'm I'm happy to uh, you know so give you whatever. Maybe this exercise where we ask our guests to choose the best question and give some reward. So probably which question according to you was good? Yeah, I can do that. Sure, happy to. Happy so to which question that. was good? Like there were a lot of questions. Uh, you found interesting. Okay, okay, you're asking me now. Uh, which question was good? Um, hold on. So they're all practical questions. How should I do? We'd love to get in touch. Our MVP. They're so. I mean, any one question, uh, probably. Yes. Yes. Maybe the board seat one was different. Uh, should we give a board seat or not? That's something I get less and less of. You uh, look into team strength. What do you look for in startups before investing? Should we use a consultant? I mean, I don't know. It's hard. Vineet, can you do? <laughs> For me, it's um, hard. Uh, maybe okay. the, co the the only unique question I got, which I've, ne which I've never been asked before, and there's a reason why I've never been asked before, because COVID-19 didn't exist before. So how will COVID-19 <laughs> further, further affect the investment? So that was... So Pranav and Bhushan had asked it. I hope I answered it. Okay. So probably... Okay, okay. So congrats to him. Good question. <laughs> yes. If you can tweet to uh, uh, Kunal or reach out to him on LinkedIn, you get 10 minutes of his time. <laughs> yes. 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 Awesome. That's a surprise day. Eh? $10 billion ideas. If you don't have one, here are $10 billion ideas I'm posting, giving them to you for free. If you make some money, give me a dollar at least. And um, uh, here's one more. <laughs> yes. And give some to e network as well so it can promote itself and become an e coffee network or whatever. <laughs> uh, sorry, bad joke. Um, awesome. And one last on the, on the upcoming starter book, which will come in the few months. So kindly feel free to download the look at the links and follow them later. and find me on LinkedIn, Twitter, if you like, and feel free to get in touch. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. With this, I'll thank you. Meeting. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, guys.
stay healthy stay safe bye